Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Queen Sports Network. We are live from JJ's Red Hot Rooftop right here in Charlotte, North Carolina on this beautiful Tuesday night. Mike Glennon alongside Nick Kloss. we got a lot of special guests in the house for this newly revamped Coaches Show. So happy to be finally able to bring this to you. It's uh, been a long time coming, and well, here we are. we got a whole new era of Queens Athletics set to usher in here in 2022. We've already begun that, but uh, I welcome in my co-host in Nick Kloss right now. And Nick, first off, welcome to the team, and uh, glad to have you along with us. Thank you, Mike. It's great to be here and uh, great to be part of this amazing transition we have into Division One. And as you said, it's already gotten started with some great games, but a lot more great things to come. Well, like you said, this is the first year of Division One. Special time it is indeed to be a Royal, not just for the athletic department, but for the university in general as well. A feeling of pride that I know is, is pretty palpable when you walk around campus, and it has been all summer long heading into this year, and there's been so much buildup. And while well, we're finally here, Taking a look at this coach's show, we're going to be live and bringing you the latest and greatest of all Queens athletics from right here at JJ's Red Hot's rooftop on Tuesday night, 6 to 7.30. Make sure you come out and join us. You listen to us live on Podbean. We'll be on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, everything the next day. Uh, but we got insider's access behind the scenes that nowhere else can give you in terms of Queens athletics. So uh, why don't we hop right into it? we got a special guest here to lead things off and welcome in this new era, not just of Queens athletics, but of course of this coach's show as well. That is Athletic Director Sherry Swartout. And Sherry, first off, thank you so much for carving some time out. I know uh, your schedule has gotten decidedly busier as of the last couple of months, but thanks so much for showing up. Well, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. Well, you know, we just talked about it. It was a, a very brief timeline indeed in terms of making the decision to go Division One. Had the press conference on May the 4th, and well, here we are on August the 30th, believe it or not, folks, heading into the month of September, and we're already underway in Division One. I mean, what's this summer been like besides being a blur? Well, yeah, it has definitely been a blur. There's no question about that. But it has been an absolutely outstanding summer. I mean, to watch our coaching staff come together after that announcement on May 4th and just do what needed to be done, which was build schedules, you know, get their student athletes ready. A lot of our timelines changed with this Division One transition. The entire university has really stepped up to help support this transition. Um, and I, we just couldn't ask for for uh, better collaboration and excited to, we're a little bit underway, but excited to continue to take those steps forward. I was going to say, it's not just a decision to go to Division One. There's a whole lot of uh, clerical stuff that goes along in that as well. And you mentioned the scheduling, and there are some teams that have had that have some tough schedules, and that's going to probably be the case for uh, the near future. But uh, like you said, a fantastic job by the coaching staffs and the athletic department to get everything rolling. You know, looking at this and looking at the goals and expectations of making this Division One jump. What has been the, the biggest difference to you that you've noticed since taking this leap to Division One? Well, uh, you know, I think obviously this is not just an athletic decision. This is a university de decision. Um, it is a part of our strategic framework. Um, it feeds the fueling growth um, aspect of that framework. And what we've noticed uh, most recently as we've gotten underway, you know, starting with July 1st, is just the amplification of every single thing that we're doing out into the community, but out into social media. Um, our numbers just continue double digit increases. Um, our attendance at the home events that we've had have been absolutely outstanding. Um, and, and that's only going to continue. So we have really seen our brand uh, just uh, take it to a whole nother level. Well, you know, Sherry, looking at we talked about expectations going into this year, and I don't even know if you necessarily could have expectations, especially with the tight turnaround. But, you know, looking at it, what were the goals of this department and this university making this leap into Division One? And, and how have you seen that starting to come to fruition a little bit? Well, I think that is the amplification of the university. How are we being able to do that through the uh, athletic department. Um, you know, we're very, very visible. We've, we've got folks traveling um, all over the country to play in different uh, venues, different cities. Um, that's only enhanced by the A-Sun. Um, but it just, it just continues to grow. Um, what we already know is great about Queens, you know, with our faculty, um, absolutely outstanding faculty, great students, um, great student athletes. And this is just an opportunity for us to share our story more broadly. Well, you know, we uh, we had the fortune of calling a couple of women's soccer games to kick off the opening weekend. That was a whole lot of fun. We'll talk to Coach Noel coming up in just a little while. But, you know, Sherry, you were there. You felt that atmosphere on August the 18th, 825, a record for Dixon Field. 
what did that do to you and what kind of sense of pride did that give you as an athletic director just to see that come about? Well, I think a lot of folks um, worked really hard on that and to get the season started and that's only going to continue to grow. But I think it just speaks volumes to our community, not just the Queens community, but the Charlotte community and how excited they are about this move uh, for Queens in the city of Charlotte. Well, and Mike, one second. I will say I was also there on, I called the Sunday game yeah. after that first one that had the record setting attendance. And I mean, the Sunday game, it's a Sunday morning, it's 10 a.m. You're thinking no one's really going to be there. That was a pretty full crowd. So it's just been very exciting. And ha that had to have felt great to see all the community kind of come together in that way. Lots of teams, lots of young girls there supporting the women's soccer team and supporting Queens as this new Division One university. Yeah, absolutely. The crowd on Sunday uh, was absolutely fantastic. Um, Coach Noel has done an awesome job um, with her team and engaging the Charlotte community. You mentioned yeah. uh, some of the young girls that were there from some of the club soccer programs. And, you know, that's just the beginning. Um, it's only going to continue to grow. So that 825 is not going to last very long. Sure. Yeah. Uh, no pressure, Coach, but uh, we're going to blow that out <laughs> of the water here in a couple of weeks. And uh, Coach Noel laughing at that one, but I think she's ready to, to up that as well. But, uh, you know, Sherry, just to piggyback off what Nick was saying, we've talked about obviously the community here, but also the Queens community, the alumni base for this, this not just the women's soccer program, but in general. Can you speak a little bit about that and what you've seen from the Queens community outside maybe uh, of the folks that we see on a daily basis and the folks that you get to talk to? Well, it's interesting, you know, Queens Athletics is only 33 years old, so we're a fairly young athletic department, and yet we've had a tremendous amount of success. It has really well positioned us for this transition from Division two to Division one. Um, you mentioned our alumni. Um, I don't think you're going to find a more robust, proud group of individuals that are so excited to watch this transformation, but not just watch it, be a part of it and experience it. And I think that's going to be demonstrated again as we come up um, on our men's soccer yep. uh, game coming up next week. Yeah, we'll talk to Coach Kreis coming up in just a little while. And, uh, again, that's coming up on September the 7th. Other big news of that coming up, uh, our first ESPN Plus game. But, you know, that's looking ahead now at the future. Can you just talk a little bit about what you're most excited for? Uh, I, I mean, I know you've alluded to some of it, but, you know, what, what was your excitement heading into this year in terms of maybe the athletics and just the university in general? Yeah, you know, it's so, so many layers to that question, right? Um, you know, we – what we want to continue to do is provide a great education for our student athletes. Um, we're going to continue to provide a great student athlete experience as part of uh, the royal family. Um, but, you know, I think our athletes are excited about uh, new places to travel, new things to see, um, what that experience is going to be like um, from a competition standpoint. So all of it's new to us and we're just embracing it. You know, we're our uh, hashtag is be the first and yeah. we're going to have a lot of firsts um, this year and we're going to stack them up and we're going to have some really great, awesome things that are going to happen just like uh, volleyball on Saturday, um, winning two Division One contests. Yeah. That was absolutely outstanding. And I had the opportunity to be there. And, you know, we're just going to keep stacking those wins up. Hey, I like that. Let's keep stacking those that's, wins. That's two big firsts right off the bat right there. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's the thing is there's a whole lot of folks that are going to be able to uh, notch their name into history books. I know as a broadcaster, myself and Nick alike, uh, we're happy about that because there's plenty of us, stuff for us to talk about throughout the year. So uh, there you, you go. You will not be short on content. I, I don't think I'm short on talking anyway, but much less uh, when I actually have something to talk about. So. You said that, I didn't. Yeah, I know. I, my wife's probably listening at home thinking the same thing. But, uh, you know, Sherry, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you know, do you have anything else you want to say to the folks out there in terms of looking ahead? Like you said, men's soccer coming up September the 7th. Get out there, enjoy it. Uh, but what do you want folks to know now for this Queens University of Charlotte? You know, we've always had an outstanding athletic department, um, and we've had a tremendous amount of success, like I mentioned early. Um, but we really want the Charlotte community to continue to embrace us yeah. um, and share our story. Um, we want to continue to spread the word about Queens in general um, into the different areas, whether it's a broader reach in Charlotte or some of the new uh, places that we're going to be traveling with the ASUN and a direct result of Division One. So we we used to think we were the best kept secret. We don't want to be that anymore. We are going to amplify this institution and we're going to be a premier institution, not just in North Carolina, not just in the Southeast, but nationally. Well, I'm excited to be a part and uh, on the forefront of that. That is for sure. Uh, Sherry, thank you so much for spending some time with us and having a conversation. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll have you back on here for a, a status update, if you will, as we go along. Sounds great. Thanks, All Mike. Right.
All right, we'll take a break. When we get back, we'll get Coach Koreas on the phone. He's live from the sports complex. He's got practice coming up, but going to cut some time out for us to have a conversation with us about his team as they went on the road and opened up their season. They will be kicking off at home September the 7th. We'll be on ESPN Plus for that, but we want a record crowd at Dixon Field once again, and why not? I think we can do it. So we will be back right here on the Queen Sports Network. Don't go anywhere. We're back right after this with more Queen's Coaches Corner. Good. No. Excellent. Once royalty carves out its place in history, it becomes an empire. And an empire needs room to grow. People call us an empire. We simply call ourselves royals. Queens has been committed to excellence in everything we do. Now, we've leveled up. We're faster. We're stronger. We're better than ever. And now, we're ready for a new challenge. Our legacy has expanded. ASUN is now our domain, whether it's away or at home. On the diamond, even when no one is watching. Working, training, coaching. In the moments that define our empire, Royals are Division I. Every journey has a starting point. Each student has a moment when talent and passion meet opportunity. At the intersection of challenge and support, self-discovery fuels breakthroughs and leaders emerge prepared for what's next. I grew up loving music. It possesses this very real, very unique power for connection and healing. And my journey as a music therapist took shape here. I discovered the pool offered a more level playing field and the chance to push my limits. Back here on the broadcast, welcome back into the Queen Coach's Corner as we come to you live from JJ's Red Hot's rooftop here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Glad to have you along with us. Mike Lennon alongside Nick Kloss, and we now welcome in our men's head soccer coach in Oliver Kareas. And uh, Coach Kareas, first off, thank you for uh, putting your practice on hold just for a little while to have a conversation with us. No, happy to be here, Mike. Well, you know, uh, we just talked about before we went to break, uh, you guys just got your season underway this past weekend. And, you know, looking at it, Coach, you got two losses uh, at, against Memphis, against UAB, but, man, you guys played pretty well out of the gate. What was it like going in that opening weekend, knowing the level of competitions, ratcheting up, and uh, how did you guys train for that? Yes, uh, definitely. We knew uh, it was going to be two great games in uh, under uh, some conditions that we're not used to, especially the heat. We sure. very well. Uh, we took a lot of positives from uh, the trip and also some good ways to take in order to continue to improve what we have done. Well, you just talked about improving, and that's something to be said. You're on the road again this week to open up uh, a Sun competition already, as crazy as that is, uh, going out to play Stetson on Saturday. Then you talk about coming back home for the first time, and that's always a big deal, but especially now as you jump into that Division One rank and uh, get to be the first men's soccer game in Division One history on Dixon Field. What does that mean to you guys? I know you're not looking past Stetson. Stetson, a very good club coming up this weekend, but what does that next Wednesday look like for you, and how excited are you guys? Yes, we, we, we taken one week at a time, right? So we uh, felt that it was great to have two games and then a week off where we can prepare our game, especially once we're opening our conference slate with uh, Stetson. It's a great game that we have Saturday night, and then we finally come back home to open our, in our home field on next Wednesday. So it's a very exciting week. It gives us six days to prepare uh, for Stetson. And then uh, we'll travel back and then we'll be at home, which is very exciting for both sides, right? So not only going away and opening our conference for any teams in Division One for our ASUN competition, but also to be uh, the first home game for our men's program next Wednesday. So yeah. very exciting week mm -hmm. ahead of us. Yeah, Coach, and uh, going back to those first two games, uh, 
there's Memphis and UAB. 19 Royals saw action in that first one. 17 of your players saw action in the second one. Is that right now you guys are just trying to find your groove? Obviously, the competition has risen this year. You guys, are you just trying to find your groove, trying to find what works with this lineup and these you know new guys coming in and everything this year? Yes, we needed to prepare well. Uh, we needed the conditions were going to be extremely hot uh, for both games. One started at 4 p.m. and it was... 99 degrees and the second one on Sunday was 101 so we needed to make sure that we manage our roster really well so that's what you saw 19 of our guys playing on Friday and I believe it was 16 17 on Sunday so managing minutes it was very important for us knowing the extreme conditions that we were going to face uh, and then we use our preseason to set our uh, group right so we, we uh, when knowing that the 20 guys that came to the uh, to the trip, each one of them were counting on us to have great minutes and contribute to our game plan for sure. Well, you know, looking at this team and how it's made up, you guys have some good returning players. Of course, you graduated a lot of talent as well, but you have a lot of newcomers. What's the locker room feel like here? You already have two games under your belt. You got the home opener coming up a week from tomorrow. But, um, you know, what does that locker room feel like right now? And, and what kind of uh, what, what kind of stuff do they have to prove this season? <laughs> it's a great combination. We have some freshmen that are 17 years old, 18. We have some experienced guys that are in the fifth year, right? So yeah. it, it has been a great three weeks where we have seen uh, our team develop our personality and character, uh, knowing that we have uh, different ages and different experience, but we have seen uh, that we, we were in the right trend, right? We have a great group of guys that know what we want, and also they have put in on our philosophy and what we need to do in order to compete in the best way possible right away. And coach, what has it been like? I mean, obviously last year having the D2 schedule. Now you look at this schedule, you have South Carolina, UNC Asheville. You got the whole A-Sun bulk of it and everything. So that's not anything any easier than all these. But you're seeing all these teams now. So obviously the talent has gotten, the competition has gotten better and everything is just going to be a little harder this season. So what is it like But being able to see, you know, Memphis and South Carolina on that schedule um, for these young players uh, getting to play at the highest level? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's an exciting and we call it an opportunity each game, an opportunity for us to compete and also just not only compete, but making sure that we're going with a mentality that we will we'll, we'll try to compete in the best way and try to get a result. Our conference itself is uh, one of the best in the nation. We have uh, yeah. some teams this weekend, Lipscomb beat the 10th uh, team in the nation at yeah. St. Louis. We have our Central Arkansas that went and played Washington mm -hmm. uh, last night. Uh, they're ranked third, so we have a great competition. I firmly believe the higher competition that you play, the better that you'll get. So uh, we see every game as an opportunity to improve and an opportunity to compete. And I think this uh, past weekend was a great learning experience for all our guys to try to take the positives and continue to grow as a team. You know, we were just talking to uh, Sherry about kind of the way things looked on that quick timeline. And, of course, scheduling is one of those things. And uh, I know you and Coach Noel especially have gone out and gotten a lot of good non-conference competition uh, and games. But, you know, can you talk a little bit about what kind of challenges you guys had to overcome on such a quick timeline? I mean, you know, not only were you trying to schedule it, but then also you got to get into, oh, yeah, training mode. Because, well, now you got to play those games that you just schedule. Sure. I firmly believe uh, we're in a good position. The uh, biggest difference is the physicality and the speed of play that it's been played in division one right yeah. and sometimes you play two games in four days right so it's really managing our team uh having a game plan each week to best uh prepare our team for wh whoever we compete that week but yes you're right out of our 17 games we have some great <laughs> great games ahead of us and yeah. we have uh 11 away games six home games uh so it's uh a lot of traveling, a lot of uh, time for us to spend and grow as a team and also to experience um, what it is to be playing against some state schools that are quite big. Well, you mentioned growth, and I know that's a big thing, not just for your new guys, but, of course, for your returners as well. You know, Coach, what can we expect from this team this year? I mean, heck, you might even know, you might not even know at this time, right, two games into the season. But, you know, what, what are the goals for this team and what were your expectations heading into the opening kickoff? Yeah, absolutely. What, what, what we see, as I mentioned to you, every game is an opportunity for us, opportunity to compete, 
uh, making sure that we put the best product on the field, right? What, what we need to do is make sure that uh, we match the intensity. We have the talent. We just got to make sure that we're ready uh, in the physical standpoint. Uh, we have a great group of talented guys that we just need to adjust to make sure that they're at the level of intensity that is being played. All right, Coach. Well, uh, thanks so much for, again, carving some time out for us here as uh, we head on in uh, to your practice time. I know there's some rain clouds rolling in up here as well. So uh, go out there, get a good uh, conditioning and practice in as much as you can. Of course, uh, we'll keep up to date with you. And then more importantly, uh, you know, we'll have you on ESPN Plus coming up a week from tomorrow. So a uh, good luck at Stetson this weekend, Coach. And, of course, we'll see you back here for Gardner-Webb coming up a week from tomorrow. Well, thank you for your time and thank you for having us. Oh, no, trust me. Absolutely our pleasure. So go out there, enjoy your rest of your day. We'll talk to you later, Coach. Thank you. Yep. All right, folks, we're going to take another break here as we get Coach Knoll set up and ready to go. Might have to do some uh, battening down the hatches for the rain coming in as well. We'll figure that out. But either way, we'll be back right after this here on the Queen's Coaches Corner on the Queen Sports Network live right after this. Joined by Shannon Neely Knoll, our head women's soccer coach here. I'm Mike Lennon. Glad to have you here on the Queen's Coaches Corner. If you're just now joining us, we appreciate it. Of course, we had to uh, tuck inside real quick. A little bit of uh, weather rolling in, but a shout out to all the Queen's faithful in attendance tonight. A very quick and uh, speedy transition. So, shout out to everybody listening. We'll make sure we throw this out there. Don't forget, you can like and follow us on Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music as well, where this will be repeated. You had the opportunity to walk out. Professional soccer players get to walk out, and of course, the Charlotte Soccer Academy there to help you guys out and uh, man they were a lot of fun to listen to on the sideline and of course uh, were at times getting the crowd into it that was, that was a lot of fun to watch but um, you know what did you see from your team on that stage in front of all those people sometimes you can back off but I'll be honest with you you guys look tough as ever they really went after it and I'm very proud of how they started the season and how we've continued to progress but that first night in particular we knew that it was going to be an emotional high just with the environment and what the occasion was sure and then to go toe to toe with such a good opponent it was going to be something really challenging and they really stepped up to that challenge the thing i'm most proud of is of course we were on the wrong side of the scoreline that night sure. but we gave up an early goal in the second half and we didn't stop we didn't take our foot off the gas we didn't balk at the situation we just stepped right back up and kept fighting yeah, absolutely. And uh, Nick had the fortune of calling the Sunday game, and you know we talked about it. Just as equally a, a, as good of a, a uh, as good of an atmosphere. But Nick, what did you see from that team, and uh, what do you have to say to Coach Noel? I mean, as far as the atmosphere, I mean, it's one. It's just crazy going Division One because you're thinking, oh, we're in Queens, we're in Charlotte, playing Ball State. Well, Ball State came out too. They they had their crowd, but I mean, in that game, what I really saw and what I really wanted to talk to you about was, you know, Jada Palmer and Erica Turner in that game. They're keeping, you know, they they kept that scoreless. It was a draw, and you know, ten saves for Turner, but Palmer had a save of her own in that game, and also um, just being a huge presence in that back line. So, what has it been like having them um, really anchor down the back line and in goal in this, you know, opening up Division One play? Great teams have difference makers, no matter what sport, no matter what level. And when you look at our squad top to bottom, we have an exceptional roster, but then we do have those difference makers. And from game to game, we've seen different people step up, and that was definitely exceptional performance from Jada and Erica on that day. Mm -hmm. And then, Coach, so now looking forward in your schedule, I mean, a lot of it's just crazy the competition you're going to face this year and uh you know you see tennessee on that schedule you see all these teams and you're kind of you're looking at it and they, this is division one this is it that's an sec opponent so how do you get your team you know ready for that that first that first game it was unc wilmington another great team and so what are you saying in the locker room to get them ready to like you said to step up and play at this level really it's about us like i said we're really fortunate we have a fantastic squad we returned 22 players from a very competitive and very successful team in the past years and we added nine newcomers that have just stepped in and done great things for us so every day and every week it's about how are we developing how are we preparing not just for the games we have more head state coming up this sunday and then you mentioned tennessee the week after to prepare us for a sun because really it was, as soon as I got here, it was talking about how are we going to make history? How are we pushing ourselves forward after so much success? 
and that didn't change. That's the same, it's just the A Sun now. And that starts in just three weeks, so we have two more weeks to prepare, and then we really go. It's coming quickly, it's <laughs> yeah. really coming there. Well, you know, you mentioned that in terms of you hit the ground running, to say the least, and uh, you know, what, what is your time as a Big Ten goalkeeper playing for Ohio State? And of course, you've made several coaching stops at the Division One level. What about your experience has helped you in terms of making this transition, especially on such a tight timeline? I think any time that you have experience, you can learn from it. And if you're really good at taking that information and pulling it along with you from stop to stop, it's yeah. going to help you be successful no matter the situation and no matter gotcha. what we are. You mentioned this is, you know, I'm a newcomer. I just got here in January, and I don't feel like it because, one, the growth of the department has been exceptional in my time here. Mm -hmm. Who we've added, I'm no longer the new kid sure. on the hall. Yeah. Uh, but also with all the transition, there's so much new and there's so much going on. It's not about me. It's about this team, and it's about what the school is doing, and I'm just really happy to be a part of it. Well, uh, we are more than happy to have you along. Coach, you know, looking into now this new era, what's that locker room feel? You know, you have – we had talked about this, you and I, before the season started, but you have a lot of good returners, a solid returning core, but you had a lot of good newcomers as well. What does that locker room feel like, and, and what were your expectations heading into this, this year? The expectations were high. Like you said, we – our program coming off of a lot of success and that maintains you want to ride that momentum no matter the circumstance sure. that you're taking on so you're adding in new pieces to just elevate what you already have this is the group has done a really good job of moving into my style and a change of coaching staff because they were in a really good place they had a wonderful head coach prior to me and there's still change and there's still different so yeah. their ability to to take on that opportunity, to take on the different things that I'm asking them to do has been exceptional. And their support of one another is the thing that I think is really carrying them right now. Absolutely. Well, uh, Coach, I appreciate you taking the time and joining us here tonight. And, of course, now looking ahead at your schedule, what you guys have left to come, uh, a couple of road games, but then you're back home on the 15th to open up um, home play in the A-Sun against Florida Gulf Coast. And you alluded to it a little bit in terms of the kind of competition you're going to face in the A-Sun. But can you elaborate a little bit more on that for maybe the folks that don't understand the soccer landscape? I mean, this is a very talented league for this team to join uh, here in 2022. The great thing about women's soccer is we're such a robust sport at the college level. Sure. There are over 340 teams, us being one of those newest programs. So that means that in the A-Sun, everybody has a soccer team. So there's 14 of us in our conference, and all of them are exceptional. So we're going to see things across the entirety of our conference and a great amount of diversity in terms of the style of play, yeah. the personality of the teams that we're going to play, and each one is going to be a great challenge. And what do you say, I was just wondering, we talked about expectations, yeah. and, they're, and they're very different, but you go right at it and you say, you know, the expectations are high. So is it safe to say, I mean, you and this team, you're not afraid of the Division One schedule, you're not afraid of, of any of, you know, the big names. You guys want to come in and be successful right away. No, everybody lines up and scores 0-0 zero, zero to kick off. So everybody has an opportunity to win, and that's our goal every game that we play. Well, Coach, appreciate you being here tonight. We'll let you get going. Uh, I know you guys got practice coming up tomorrow, but, of course, on another road trip. And that's the other thing. You know, we talked about the travel aspect this year a little bit different than in years past in terms of the amount of travel, the distance being traveled as well. So uh, hopefully everybody's able to sign up for frequent, frequent flyer miles because I, I feel like you guys are going to get a lot this year, right? Well, yeah, I always love a bus trip. Uh, hey, bus trips are always fun. Uh, team bonding. If exactly. You will, so. Well, Coach, I appreciate you joining us. Uh, go out and enjoy the rest of your night. We, of course, uh, will see you back on uh, ESPN Plus, fun enough, on yes. uh, mm -hmm. the September the 15th for Florida Gulf Coast. But, Coach, thanks for carving out some time for us here tonight. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Go Royals. Uh, we'll take another break. When we get back, we got volleyball coming your way and a historic volleyball team in general as they came up with the first two ever wins in school history at the Division One level. We'll talk to Coach Long about that right after this here on the Queen Sports Network. Welcome back, everybody, to the Queen's Coaches Corner here on this Tuesday night in Charlotte, North Carolina. Coming to you live from JJ's Red Hots. Now, we were on the rooftop, but no longer up there. It's uh, rain rolling in, so luckily the fantastic crew that's here with us, uh, everybody involved in the athletic department, helping uh, run everything downstairs. It was, to be honest with you, I hope someone was recording that because it was quite the sight to see. But either way, we are joined uh, now by a very special guest, and that is Coach Hannah Long. And uh, first off, Coach Long, congratulations. First two wins in Division One history for the school. And... Uh, uh, you know, you guys had a pretty good weekend out there in Nashville. Uh, definitely. I think it was important to see that our style of play can be successful. Um, and also, 
got a lot of confidence. Uh, when you work really hard during preseason and the team has worked unbelievably hard um, the month of August, to see that pay off with the W on the scoreboard is huge. Well, you know, we talked about the first ever wins. You take down Stonehill, a, a brand new Division One uh, contest in and of their own as one of the five schools making the jump from Division Two to Division One this year. And then uh, you took down UNC Asheville on their home turf. You know, um, in those matches, you mentioned it, a very hard-fought summer for you guys, a very quick turnaround. What is it about this team that speaks to you in terms of the way that they've meshed so quickly? I actually think it really started in the spring. Okay. Um, the returning... We worked really hard in the fall with our culture, and then during the spring, during our training during the spring, they really made an emphasis on being a together team and having the culture of work ethic and togetherness. And then, you know, this fall in August was really just bringing our new athletes into that fold. So I think it's been a lot longer process than maybe some people realize yeah. um, for our team. Well, in those in those games, uh, six to one uh, out of those two games, a three nothing sweep of Stonehill, and then a three one win over against UNC Asheville. You know, you, you took a couple of hits on Friday, but then came right back out on Saturday and turned it around. You know, what was key to those matches for you in terms of going into those days? Well, I think Friday we even learned a lot. Um, we had opportunities on Friday. We dug ourselves in a hole in one of the sets and clawed ourselves all the way back to get a nice little lead late. Um, had trouble stopping some of their offensive play sets, but I think we learned that we could fight back. Um, and then on Saturday morning, I mean, we just came out really aggressively. Um, so we built a nice lead in that first set. But most importantly, in the second set, we found ourselves down. We even found ourselves down set point. Yeah. 24-22. Um, and just really, it sounds weird, but we almost had to like calm down <laughs> <laughs> sure. to execute in that moment um, and just really execute it well to finish out that second set. And I think that second set against Stonehill kind of laid the groundwork for what came after that. Okay. Um, just to go, no, we can find ourselves behind and you know learn how to execute in those moments and not give up and the biggest one i was just really impressed with our backcourt defensive effort gotcha um you know i i got some text messages after the stonehill game saying i didn't know that you could that kicks were legal in volleyball <laughs> and i was like yeah they are and we actually won that point so um <laughs> i think that those types of plays are what kind of can rally a team around and sure. i think we saw that on saturday night against Asheville. i saw that highlight by the way and that was uh, that was pretty impressive it, it, it's similar to what happened last year actually at queens a, a very similar one but hey bicycle kicks are legal so go ahead and get it done whatever by any means necessary and just keep the ball off the floor yeah absolutely <laughs> hey, if it works, it works. And, That's uh, right. But looking at, um, you know, your roster this season, it is on the younger side. It seems like not not too many veterans, but the team, the players making an impact. You know, Allie Johnson led in kills over the weekend. Hallie Brown, the freshman, she's making an impact. Is that nice to see for you having, you know, those younger players, sophomores and freshmen, they're stepping up or and you have a bright future with that? Or would you like to see, you know, the veteran uh, presence more? We don't really have a veteran presence. So that's that's we, yeah. we have one senior. We have a handful of juniors. And I think we need to recognize that our handful of juniors had a very weird start to their college career. Mm -hmm. They yes. were freshmen during the pandemic, so they only had a weird small spring. They didn't really get that training, so they, in essence, if you look at it, are sophomores as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, yeah, it'd be nice to have some returners, but I think it's better that you've got a team that's connected culturally and has the same cultural mindset, and we just have a philosophy that we're all equals. Like, we don't even have team captains. Um, because we want everybody to feel like they have responsibility for leadership on our team as well, no matter what their age is. And I think the team has really rallied around that idea that it doesn't matter what age you are or how long you've been in our program, you can make an impact on and off the court. Yeah, I, I really like that philosophy in terms of not having the team captains. I, that, that's... I like that a lot. Um, you, you know, talking to, and just to mention folks like Allie Johnson, I mean, can you talk a little bit about this sophomore class coming back? Because last year, as freshmen, they all got a significant amount of playing time and maybe more than some of them thought they would coming into the season. I don't know. But either way, you know, how do you think that prepared this sophomore class? And then, of course, now they can trickle that down to say, hey, to the freshmen, just keep it calm. And like you said, calm down and kind of find yourself. 
nothing replaces experience. Fair enough. Um, and last year we regularly played nine, and five of them were freshmen. Yeah. Um, so they did get a lot of court time. Um, that obviously will help them know how to execute in those moments that you know require it. Um, but I think they also just have a real hand in the culture of our team. I, I can't say it enough that they they worked really hard over the spring. Yeah. Really, really hard over the spring, and I think that pays off in future years with can, new athletes as well. Can you talk a little bit more about that in terms of the spring and the summer regimen? I mean, you guys obviously had a whole lot to get ready for, but it, 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 I imagine it turned into just getting ready for playing volleyball. I mean, no matter what division you're at, but you know, what did this spring and summer look like for you guys? Well, again, if you want to go back two years, we had, I mean, we got sent home in March of 2020, so we didn't really have a spring then. Yeah. And then we played in spring of 2021. Mm -hmm. So spring 2022 was the first time we really had an opportunity. And the spring season is when you get to do individual work with kids, you know, um, and really break down their skills and give them more mental training on how to approach the game. And they get to have really intense workouts with your strength coach in the weight room. Um, we actually had one athlete on our team. She increased her vertical by five inches. In wow. Spring. Whoa. And that is from <laughs> just really, really working hard in the weight room um, and the leadership that we have in our athletic department and our sports performance just saw them increase it so much and our speed and just the way we move around the court just having that time to break it down um was huge and uh, in case for those of you listening at home if you don't know about the five inches of vertical that's a lot in a very yeah. short amount of time so uh a whoever that is a shout out to them that's uh, that's a lot of work uh but you know in terms of the way this schedule shook out, and everybody's schedule is different this year, but you guys are on the road until September the 25th. That's your that's your first home game. So, you know, how do you get ready for such a long road trip to some pretty decent distances that you guys are traveling in terms of these first couple of weeks? I mean, for the good thing about being young is you don't know any different. <laughs> um, that's fair. All right. <laughs> like, if you're young, you don't know any different. You know, don't sure. know that it's weird to spend this much time on the road. Um, we did do some things during the preseason. Like we actually took our team off campus to have a meal in a restaurant okay. and then come back and do an inner squad scrimmage just so they got the idea of what it's like to go as a team into a restaurant and then have gotcha. to go to a facility and warm up and get ready to play. And that sounds weird, but I do believe you should practice everything. Um, and that was a little taste of how to practice being on the road. Yeah. Um, with each other for so much time but you know when you make a transition and it's a short on-ramp uh, lots of people are willing to play you but they're not <laughs> willing to come to your place to yes. play you yeah. so we kind of had to take what we could got um, we I think we have a great schedule um, just with what we are able to be regional yeah. a little bit and then get kind of a taste of what it's like to fly um, going to Memphis before we have to fly to South Florida yeah um, mm -hmm. conference play yeah and uh Looking at that schedule, I mean, you're heading to Mercer um, next week, uh, I believe. And so off of that last tournament, you come out of it 2-1. and one. What do you want to take from those three games into the Mercer tournament that you think you did well in those first couple games? Uh, I think we ball controlled really well. Um, if you look at our serve-receive stats, um, our serve-receive was really solid throughout the weekend, and that can go a long way at every level. Um, I also thought we defend it really well. Like, I think there were balls that, you know, the opponent thought should have been down that weren't and that we were able to kind of get them in longer rallies and transition opportunities, I thought was huge. So I definitely think we're going to take that. But I also think we're going to take some lessons from where we need to kind of tighten up our game a little bit. Um, just tighten up our game when it comes to blocking. I thought we could have done a little bit better job of that. Um, so we've been working on the, that the past couple days and also kind of recognizing when teams adjust because Asheville made some key adjustments in that third set and we were slow to respond. Um, I think we got it back together in the fourth set, but part of the reason we lost that third set is Asheville countered some things that we were doing and we didn't counter attack back. Um, and so learning like, oh, how did the other team adjust and being a, be able to adjust a little bit quicker than we did versus Asheville. Well, 
Mike Lennon alongside Nick Kloss. We're talking to Coach uh, Hannah Long of the women's volleyball program. Of course, coming off a historic weekend, uh, heading on the road again for uh, hopefully more uh, W's before you come back home. And, of course, we'll have you on ESPN Plus when you do get back home. But, uh, Coach, before we let you go, you know, we were talking about a little bit with uh, Coach Noel about how tough the A-Sun is, and it's the same thing in volleyball. And, you know, I, I'm looking at some of these teams. and But uh, that being said, I'm looking at you guys, too. I mean, you guys are, are a scrappy bunch that can compete at a high level. You know, can you talk a little bit about the competition you guys are going to face in the A-Sun and, and how you guys are preparing for that? Well, you know, opening weekend, two of the top teams in the A-Sun actually went to Big Ten tournaments. So Florida Gulf Coast went up to Maryland, and um, Jacksonville State went to Indiana, and they both came away with wins. I was going to say, I know Florida teams. Gulf Coast won, so. <laughs> yeah, they both came away with wins versus Big Ten teams, and if you know about volleyball, Big Ten is one of the top conferences in the nation, so to have you know teams in our conference succeeding on that level just shows the level that we're going to be asked to compete against. Um, I think, you know, you just... I think it was Coach Leonard actually talked to me about it, the men's basketball coach. You know, just get 2% better every day. Mm -hmm. Just get 2% better every day. If like. you get 2% better every day, then you can find yourself being able to compete at that higher and higher level. Yeah. So, you know, if we were to lace them up, you know, two months ago against <laughs> those teams, I don't think it would have gone really well. But we got 2% better every day during the preseason. Yep. Um, and we're going to work hard to get 2% better every day this week. And if we continue that, then when we do see that ASUN schedule, I think we're in a better position to compete at that level. Absolutely. Well, Coach, I uh, appreciate you joining us here on this Tuesday night. I know you came over directly from practice, so I appreciate you hustling on over. And, uh, and uh, again, switching up locations as well, going up and down those stairs. So uh, thank you very much. Good luck this weekend. Of course, we'll see you coming up end of September, but a whole lot of action between now and then. We'll be rooting for you all along the way. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. All right, we'll take a, one more break, and then we'll have Coach Kiss of Field Hockey on to have a conversation with us about her team and what it looks like as she makes that transition to Division One as well. Don't go anywhere. We're back here on the Queen's Coach's Corner right after this. Back here on the Queen's Coach's Corner as we are coming to you live from JJ's Red Hots. Mike Glenn alongside Nick Kloss as we switch gears and uh, head over to Basant Field, even though we're staying here at JJ's. And we'll talk a little field hockey. We are now joined by women, by field hockey head coach Brandy Kiss. And first off, Coach Kiss, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, welcome to the program. And, of course, welcome to JJ's. You know, Coach, coming off your opening weekend, and we talked about it, uh, it's one of those things It's a little weird. Uh, I mean, it's going into a new season, but, of course, now you're making Making that jump to Division One and so on and so forth, and I, I, I don't know how many times you've probably heard that over the last <laughs> couple of weeks, but um, you know, what was it like just taking the field for the first time this season? Much less the Division One side of things. You took the field, and, and you might have come up a little bit short, but what did it feel to finally get back out there in game action? Yeah, it was exciting. Uh, you know, the players were definitely amped up and ready to go. Sure. Uh, I think that really showed with our energy and our communication and everything in the in the first half, coming up with that quick first goal yeah. uh, to get things going. Uh, so it was it was exciting. exciting. Well, a, a shout out to Anya Kemp, first uh, first person to score for the field hockey program, and uh, as a Division One player, and uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, a newcomer to the team uh, as well, right? Yeah, she actually okay. uh, got here in January. Okay, so she's trained with us in the spring, and gotcha. it's her first actual season. So, well, it, you know, it, it, can you talk a little bit about the makeup of this team, and you guys? guys have 15 returners, lost 10 folks from last year, but replaced those with eight freshmen and, of course, uh, a lot of talent in that freshman class as well. But can you talk a little bit about the makeup of the team and, and kind of what your strategies were going into this year? I know a lot of them seeing action in that first game. You know, what's the strategy heading forward now uh, towards Davidson coming up on Friday? Yeah, so a lot of it for us is, you know, technically we're, we're good. We have the skills, we have the fundamentals. It's getting used to playing at such a high pace. Sure. For 60 minutes uh, so you know it's a lot of the fitness piece that we kind of are catching up on a bit uh, but overall they've been up for the challenge and they've been pushing themselves so we're excited to look forward to Davidson say as long as they're uh, accepting the challenge that's exactly that's what they for, are right? <laughs> and would you, would you say really the difference between the caliber of play from D2 to D1 is it really is it the main thing that fitness aspect the athleticism you know that's really the big difference yeah that is definitely a big difference um, and a lot of that is actually reflected too on the surface that we play on so across D2 it's mostly kind of the longer um, field turf fields uh, so at D1 
we're primarily what we have, which is the water-based turf. So it's a higher pace, which our players are used to practicing, but we're also used to then traveling and playing on a slower pace on uh, on field turf field. So it's kind of just getting caught up that with that consistency of it. Mm -hmm. Well, it, you know, in, in a shout out, I, funny, we didn't get a chance to talk about this last spring, but uh, of course, USA Field Hockey coming in, making uh, Bassant Field their home turf. And, yep. you know, it, it, can you talk a little bit about that partnership and kind of uh, what that means to this team and, of course, kind of seeing the caliber of play that they do out of a U.S. national team? Um, of course, Kelsey Robles, one of your uh, assistant coaches and goalkeeper for that national team. But, you know, what, what kind of aspect has that brought to being able to train folks uh, to come into Charlotte? Yeah, I think it's a, a bigger attraction and, you know, field hockey isn't a huge sport per se in the south sure um so i think it's great to have that exposure to help grow the game uh and i know the u.s team has had a lot of involvement as well at the youth level working with charlotte ambush which has led to you know just that partnership sure. with the three of us sharing that field um and sharing that space and having kelsey on staff with her with her professionalism and intensity and everything it has just kind of elevated to the next level yeah absolutely and, and you know you look at you guys do have a great facility and, and now you're heading in towards the rest of this season and of course you got 12 straight road games <laughs> after this Friday but we'll talk about that uh, coming up here in just a moment but you know what were the expectations for this team going into this year what were you hoping out of the squad and and did you see a little bit of flashes of that in game one yeah so a big a big focus is, is growth and learning um, you know regardless of the outcome of the game it's you know, what is success for us in any given game. Yeah. And, you know, we have certain measurables that we're looking at each game, um, different goals, and, you know, as we go through each game, kind of measuring, okay, are we improving in this area? Are we improving in this area? Um, so, you know, we took a couple things from this last game that we're really focusing on this week at practice, and, you know, that's the next step. That's going to be the next measure of success when we play Davidson is how do we do in these, like, kind of measurable areas. Sure. Well, you know, and before, not to cut you off, Nick, but um, just to go back to a point you made earlier in terms of, you know, this game still growing in the southeast, I equivalated to what lacrosse looked like over just about a decade ago in terms of, you know, it was really starting to catch fire, and, and now you look at the sport, and some of the best teams in the nation are in the southeast, which I can tell you, as coming from the northeast, if you were to say that about a decade ago, you would have been laughed out of a room, but <laughs> now your national champions are coming from the southeast. Yep. So, uh, you know, looking at the sport of field hockey, you know, how big is it now? that you have this mecca here in Charlotte to really uh, kind of bring, not just bring folks to, but train people on this field and of course now into this program. Yeah, I, I mean, it's great. We had um, a lot of people from the north, you know, field hockey is <laughs> sure. concentrated a lot of them in the northeast. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of them are like, I want to come south. I, I want, you know, better weather and, you yeah. know, um, all of that. So we've attracted a lot of those players and we've even had, you know, one family in particular move down here from oh, New right. York. So, okay. uh, you don't know, blame them, exactly, but, yeah, uh, you know, know at the same time. Great yeah. idea. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, you know, so I think it's been it's been really great in that regard. And now that we have elevated to Division One, uh, you know, continuing to grow the sport and really bring a spotlight to it, um, you know, in Charlotte. So, you know, it's funny. My wife and I make the joke that I mean, I grew up in Central New York, and I'd say it's about a 50-50 shot down here. If you ask where you're from, you know, somewhere in the state of New York, oh, Massachusetts, <laughs> Northeast, somewhere. So, oh, I mean, when I went to I went to Tampa originally to play lacrosse, and you get to that school, you walk in, and it's just like, oh, where are you from? Oh, Boston, uh, yeah. New yeah. York, oh, yeah. uh, wherever. <laughs> I just wanted to come south. Yep. They, it's the weather. It's the weather. They love it. You know, Coach, you were a Division One player yourself at Penn. Have you been able to bring any any of, uh, of what your playing style, or at least the idea of being a, a Division One player, have you been able to instill that at all on, these, on this new crop of, uh, of young ladies that you have uh, on your tutelage? Yeah, I mean, we have had, kind of even as we were D2, we've had a more kind of focused professional approach sure. to a lot yeah. of what we do, but now it's it's kind of elevating at another level um, and even focusing on the nutrition piece, on the fitness piece. Um, you know, now we have uh, our strength coach who's able to, to dedicate a little bit more time to our program a bit more. So he's out there on most days, um, you know, with our warm-ups, uh, running us through some agility stuff and um, a couple days a week working with us on fitness um, sure. very specifically. So it's just elevating a couple of other things. Absolutely. Yeah, and I know the one thing that I've been thinking about a lot with this interview was 
and Mike just mentioned it, is the 12 game road <laughs> trip. And uh, so just wanted to get your thoughts on that and you know how that's going to test your team this season. A little yeah. bit of the elephant in the room, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's actually, even though we are traveling a lot, the schedule for the most part has laid out pretty well because we actually miss I think maybe one day of class oh, okay. this whole semester. Wow. For um, 12 straight road games, that's uh, yeah. fairly impressive. Yeah. yeah, so we, you know, it worked out where most of our games are Sunday. So we're leaving Saturday and we play Sunday and get back Sunday night. Okay. So in a sense, it's it has worked out well in that mm-hmm. regard. Uh, you know, even though we're traveling, it's to a lot of new places. So I think the energy from the team will be really good throughout the season for that. Uh, just the excitement of, you know, playing at a new, at a new town or a new yeah. city, a different field and facility. Um, so I think that that will kind of keep them energized, even though we are going to be we are going to be on the road a lot. <laughs> well, hey, the good news is you still got one more coming up at home. And that, of course, is on Friday. Uh, and just so you know, schedule change uh, was originally 7 p.m. Now it's 6 p.m. And uh, coach, I-, I know you want to see everybody out. Senior day is coming up later on in the year yeah. when you take on Limestone. But, uh, you know, what do you want to say to the folks in terms of getting out there and supporting this team before you guys take that that road trip? Whether it be short road trips or not, it's yeah. still a lot of road trips. And, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. uh, what would you like to see from the fans coming up on Friday? Uh, well, even in our last game, I mean, the fans brought the energy and yeah. we loved it. And I will give a shout out to our alumni because <laughs> we have a lot that stay, have stayed in Charlotte. Yeah. Yes. They showed up in full force, so, um, you know, shout out to them. It was much appreciated. So just that energy, really, the team fed off of that a lot. So Well, and, and you know, the one thing I'll give all Queens teams, none of them are quiet on the sidelines. <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, your team is just alike. And so, you know, it's, it's funny because we were set up – broadcast wise on the your side of the field this time around for the first time ever and uh, I'll be honest I enjoyed it because there was more crowd mic noise than there ever has been (laughs) now granted I didn't have to good news is I didn't have to turn it down real quick at all but at the same time uh, no it's just it's nice to see that atmosphere and I know you know you guys rally around one another as a team but like you said to have an alumni base like you do it's a pretty fantastic thing to really uh, try to move forward in this year Yep. Well, Coach, I appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Uh, again, we said save the best for last. You know what I mean? Awesome. And uh, <laughs> past 7 o'clock here, uh, almost 7.15 at JJ's Red Hots. But we appreciate you joining us. We'll have you back on. We'll talk about uh, what the road trip looks like and uh, keep people updated along the way. But best of luck coming up this weekend. Thank we'll be there on Friday night. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Pre-game for that game starts at 5.50 right on our Queen Sports Network YouTube page. Make sure you head on over and check that out. As you can follow us across all social media, make sure you do that. Like and subscribe on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at QU Sports Network for all the freshest, newest content from Queens Athletics that we have to offer all in one place. Make sure you hit us up and check us out. We'll take a break. Nick and I will come back, wrap up the show, and kind of preview what we got coming up this year. Make sure you stay tuned. We're back right here on the Queen Sports Network right after this. Back here live at JJ's Red Hots here in Charlotte, North Carolina, as we are wrapping things up here on our first Queen's Coaches Corner, a newly revamped show. It brings all your inside access. So first off, a quick shout-out to all the coaches and, of course, uh, Athletic Director Sherry Swartout for joining us here tonight. Back alongside my co-host, Nick Kloss. And, Nick, taking a look at the remainder of this schedule, we talked about it, kind of previewing what we got going on. And, of course, not just with sports, but uh, what we got going on here. One of those things is the fact that uh, Queen's is on a mission this year to turn East Boulevard into Queen's Boulevard, Queen's College Street, if you will. JJ's Red Hots, of course, alongside Bricks and other locally famous places and businesses are located on the soon-to-be Royals Athletics-themed street, going to be Queens Boulevard, so make sure you write that down. Mission, of course, is for all visitors, new and old, to cap off an incredible experience of the city of Charlotte with a trip to this prestigious university, journeying our beautiful local community in the process. So a big shout-out to John here at JJ's Red Hots for hosting us here tonight, and, of course, uh, pivoting from the rooftop down mm-hmm. here. But, uh, Nick, looking ahead at this schedule, and we talked about it coming up a week from tomorrow, that's Wednesday, September the 7th, first ESPN Plus broadcast, my Myself, uh, you'll be involved in a lot of those as well. You know, coming from South Carolina, of course, you grew up a, a little bit north of here, mm-hmm. and then I uh, went to USC. But what are you excited about as an outsider coming into the Queens community? What what excites you so much? I mean, first off, I'm just gonna say. I mean, you just mentioned a huge thank you to all the coaches. I mean, everyone in this athletic department so far has been fantastic. I mean, the people here, it, that's that's a big part of it is the people here at Queens yeah. have been amazing. And then also what I'm excited for is being 
a student at the University of South Carolina, there's so much tradition. There's so much, you know, it's just, it's been around so long. Yeah. Things you've done for so many years that it's just ingrained in you when you become a student. Queens is building that. They're ma- I mean, they have their traditions from yep. being here so long, but now in the sports world, the Division One world, they're building those traditions, those memories, those historic moments we've already yeah. seen from volleyball and women's soccer and many more to come, like you talked about with the ESPN Plus broadcast on September 7th. I mean, there's so much to be excited about. And just as an outsider coming in, to feel so welcomed and also just be so excited. I mean, you're yeah. just a, you're just on board. I'm ready to watch Queens. I'm ready to watch the Division One games. And I'm ready to see them compete at the highest level. Well, and, and don't get me wrong. You know, as someone who's been around for a couple of years, this is a program that has competed at the highest level for a long time. And at the Division Two level, you have so many national championships. Uh, of course, seven consecutive on the men's and women's side of swimming. I mean, that's something that you don't see very often. I mean, that's... John Wooden-esque when it comes to uh, national championships, but you know, one thing I'm excited about is to see how these teams translate to the Division One level. But I'm just excited for the city of Charlotte, where you know now you have this brand new newcomer to Division One, the smallest school in Division One, or at least one of the smallest schools. I'm pretty sure we are the smallest school it's in Division One athletics. But at the same time, man, do we compete? Over a third of our student body is student athletes, and I think that that is what is so unique about this university. And you mentioned it, kind of people coming from all over the place and just coming together and playing athletics at the highest level not just for their sport, but of course in Division One and in the, in the NCAA, this is the epitome of that, and man, I, I'm excited to see how all these teams translate. I think you really have to look at the recruiting draw that yeah. and these teams have. Queens has a great draw to it. If you are, we, I mean, we talked about especially in the lacrosse worlds, which is the world I come from. Sure, yeah. Um, up north, you're looking at all these kids trying to come south, and a lot of these schools, High Point, UNC, all these southern schools are having a lot of success because I mean who doesn't love we talked about who doesn't love the nice weather oh of course to come to these schools Charlotte has a great city great city life for a young person an awesome environment and then Queens is right there in the middle of it and competing at the highest level at Division Two, and now it's going to translate to Division One. So it's got a great draw, and it's going to—I think a lot of recruits are going to want to come here. Well, and, and you mentioned it, recruits, and, and we—I we alluded to it earlier. We talked about that game atmosphere uh, on on Thursday, the 18th, and you know, I was fortunate enough to have that call. And of course, you were there checking out the behind-the-scenes stuff, and you had the call on that Sunday. I mean, it's just such an atmosphere. And the alumni base, it all starts there. And the reach of this Queens University of, a- University of Charlotte athletics community and how far it goes. And in so many walks of life, that's the other thing. It's not just you know people involved in sports or involved in business. There's so many people because there's such a medical side of things at the Queens University of yeah. Charlotte as well. And it just sets up for such unique atmosphere. And, you know, I, I don't want this to sound like a pitch, but, folks, get to these games. You're going to be impressed by the way everything looks and uh, not to mention the atmosphere. I mean, this is, like you said, Division One caliber athletics and it's that kind of atmosphere and then, you know, that's of course what everybody here at Queens Athletics is trying to build. And it's right, it's right here, here, right here in Charlotte and also looking at, you know, Dixon Field, that environment, I like you said, I got to be there and, you know, it was almost nice. Mike, I didn't have to call the game so I just got <laughs> to take it in. Yes, and exactly. Got, you got, got to be a fan. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I got to take it in and uh, that environment is just amazing because you know it's not a stadium that you walk into and it's not going to take your breath away based on the amount of seating but it's going to take your breath away in a different way in the fact of you know you have the people all on the grass and on the hill and then you have the stands filled and people are up on the top and you know it fills up like that and it kind of reminds me of like Clockner Stadium at UVA for lacrosse. They fill up the whole thing. People just sit on the grass. And yeah. that's the great thing about Dixon Field and Queens. That environment is because it's not about the stadiums. It's not about how big it is. It's about the people there and the passion from the community and the fans. And Queens has it right here. Well, it's funny you say that. I always make the joke of, yeah, you, know, you can fill up the stands, but it's that uh, that general admission lawn seats kind of feel. And, you know, there's a lot of big Division One programs, SEC, ACC, Big Ten that have those types of environments and 
you know, the ability to, to bring in, like you said, pack out stadiums. And that's exactly what this Queens program is going to do uh, for every sport. It's not just for one sport. It's one thing if you go into Division One and, you know, basketball is your sport, lacrosse is your sport. We have 26 varsity sports, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of good athletes and, you know, future Olympians play for Queens University of Charlotte. So it's going to be fun to bring all those storylines, of course, uh, not just on the broadcast, but across all of our social media platforms as well, at QU Sports Network on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Follow us at Queen Sports Network on YouTube and, of course, ESPN Plus coming up a week from tomorrow on September the 7th. 7 p.m. kickoff for that one for men's soccer taking on Gardner-Webb. Uh, don't forget also tomorrow to head on over to Spotify, Apple Music, and Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcasts. That's where you can find this. We'll record live each and every Tuesday. we got some pretty big announcements coming up when it comes to the radio side of things. But, um, you know, looking ahead at this year, Nick, we were talking about it a little before we came on, and honestly, we've been talking about it for the last couple months. Um, you know, we are in a unique position to build this from the ground up, and not just from the broadcast side of things, but of course, podcasting network. We're going to have all sorts of shows starting this year. A lot of them will be student led, which is always a, a fun perspective uh, when it's not just a bunch of people coming and getting paid to do it. Uh -huh. It's uh, you know people that actually play these sports and have friends that play other sports and all that kind of stuff. So we just have so many new things that to be a part of and initiatives that are coming and I, I want to make sure that everybody gets hooked in on all that because the podcasting network is going to be a lot of fun uh, you know you and I both have seen what podcasting has done over the last couple of years and now we have a venue like this John here at uh, JJ's Red Hots has been fantastic he wants you to come on out and again help us make this Queens Boulevard this is this is the the, uh, this the is objective folks and uh, we are not stopping until we get that job done so. now we're gonna get it done and like you said I mean there's the opportunity here to build yeah to build something new right here at Queens University of Charlotte and you know it's new in a different way we talked about it the other day especially on the broadcast side with ESPN plus yeah there's tons of ESPN plus broadcasts but there are ways you can be unique yes. in that way and that's what we're finding and also helping the school helping Queens getting those student-led things so you know there's great sports great athletics at Queens University of Charlotte and then there's also a great broadcast background to it if any students want to get involved if they want to you know put some stuff on their resume and yeah. be a part of it it's a great opportunity so I'm extremely excited to be a part of this with you Mike and to be able to build something from the ground up and just so you know folks at home I did not pay him to recruit for this so uh, I'm just saying you know listen to the man he, he's a smart guy you know uh, er, er, Nick I appreciate you joining us uh, you know Mike Lennon alongside Nick Kloss here uh, wrapping things up at JJ's Red Hots Nick will be joining us throughout the year uh, come basketball season we'll have of course color commentator Walker Mail uh, of WFNZ he'll hop on here with us to have some conversation but I think that's what I'm most excited for and I think what we don't get to do as play-by-play -play broadcasters as much, and that's just have a conversation. Oh, and yeah. For people that absolutely love sports, and even for those that don't, I think that's the biggest thing that I want folks to take away from a show like this. Yeah, we're going to talk a lot about sports, but we're going to talk a lot about human interest things as well. Mm -hmm. And talk about the athletes, talk about the coaches, and talk about people that work for the university that maybe don't have anything to do with athletics. but. Mm -hmm how they intertwine with this Queens community because that is what it is. It's a Queens family and uh, we are excited to have you all listening out there as a part of that. Make sure you like and subscribe, follow us and everything. Big thank yous and shout outs to everybody involved in getting this set up behind the scenes and of course uh, the folks coming on and Athletic Director Sherry Swart out carving some time out for us. Uh, we had all of our head coaches of our fall sports as well. We'll add cross country coming up. They get in action a couple of weeks from now. Uh, so we'll talk to Jake Krolik here in the coming weeks. But, uh, Nick, I appreciate you joining me here tonight, man. I'm glad to start this new with you. And, uh, man, I'm excited to see where this thing takes us. No problem. Thanks for having me on. And uh, I'm really excited to see where we can go with this and uh, the rest of this season. All righty, folks, we're going to cut you loose for this Tuesday night. Appreciate you joining us. Appreciate you pivoting with us as well in terms of the way the weather works. Uh, rain falling outside. We had to jump down here. And, of course, we thank the folks here at JJ's Red Hots for allowing us to do that as well. Go out. Enjoy the rest of your night, folks. We'll see you back here for another Queens Coaches Corner a week from tonight, 6 to 7.30, live from JJ's Red Hots. Don't forget, field hockey coming up on Friday at 6 p.m. We will have that pregame starting at 5.50 on our YouTube page. But more importantly, folks, Get out there and support that team in person. Make a lot of noise. You heard Coach Kist. They feed off that noise. Get out there and make a whole bunch of it. Go out and enjoy the rest of your night, folks. And as always, go Royals.